Hello and welcome to semifinal coverage of Grand Prix Pittsburgh. I'm Brian David Marshall, joined in the booth by Pro Tour champion Jacob Van Lunen. Oh, Matt Long got the playing game one? Oh, I want to switch my answer to the question <laughs> you just asked me. Uh, J uh, Matt Long <laughs> and Brownson Gervaisi playing in a Mardu vehicles mirror. I could tell you that... Uh, I'm just looking at uh, Mulligans here. It looks like Matt Mulligan to five cards, though, on the play. Bronson Mulligan to six here to get started. But uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger for Matt Long on turn two into a Thraben Inspector from Bronson Gervaisi. Fire of Industry does a little damage to Bronson Gervaisi. And, you know, well, I love that synergy with the clues. You know, providing an artifact so that you have access to yeah. all, all the mana your deck needs to operate. There's a veteran motorist. The Thraven Inspector hopping into Aether Spear Harvester is quite nice as well. Seems like a lot of car for a Thraven Inspector, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. All right. Veteran motorist also such an incredible card. And... You know, it, it's got it doesn't a bit feel worse. Like, it doesn't feel like an ability that a red, white, or a Mardu aggro deck should have that ability to, like, filter your draws as well as this deck does. There's so many little incremental advantages that this deck has. Yeah, it really smooths out draws. And uh, it, I like that they did this to this card, though, because a lot of the time with aggro decks, you, you don't feel like the top of your deck is doing what you want it to do. And having a deck that really, like, curves out how you planned it more often is pretty cool and uh, create some consistency for these aggro decks so that they can, can compete with some of these big and powerful spells like Gideon. What they didn't expect was that people would just play it alongside Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Gideon, a huge card, getting Matt Long into the top eight, getting him qualified for the first pro tour of his career. And there you see the Aether Sphere Harvester. Vehicle that has become... Uh, much more popular among this crowd of Magic players who, who, who like this Mardu deck. And that's a card that even as recently as last weekend was kind of off the radar. And this week on Magic Online, people have demonstrated that it is very powerful and now it's starting to do some good work here. We don't have to call this Mardu energy, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope not. Ooh. I do not know what that foily card is. Oh, is that a, is that a Thalia? I believe it's a, a promo Thalia Heretic okay. Car. So I'm now, I was going by context clues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a 3-2 first striker and all creatures and non-basic lands. That yeah, non-basic lands entering in the battlefield tapped is a big deal in this matchup. Yeah, and creatures also because you can't crew with creatures that you play right away, which can make for some pretty awkward situations and uh, give you a big racing advantage. Of course... When it comes to racing, uh, lifelink is pretty nice. Yeah, then we see the Ethosphere Harvester <coughs> fly over the top. Gain three life for Matt Long. He has, uh, he has some good cards in hand. He has Heart of Kieran. He has Gideon. Just a pass here. Yeah. Kind of a tell for unlicensed disintegration, I imagine. In comes the team. It's a seven. Looks like it's going to be fatal put. No, it is going to be unlicensed disintegration. That's the unknown card in hand. It's going to take out Thalia, which is going to unlock any non-basic lands he draws from coming into play untapped. But his creatures come into play in the right, uh, facing the right direction. Yeah, yeah. And also, you get that three-power first striker off the table, which is pretty good in this matchup. Another Thraben Inspector. Bali is another card I expected to have more of an impact in the standard format than it ended up having. So, and then Thraben Inspector, and then an, an Aether Spear Harvester for Gervaisi. So, this is going to be a. We could be seeing another gummy board here. Oh, yeah, and I ex fully expect to in these Mardu Vehicles matchups. I mean, this game, maybe not so much with Matt Long on five cards. Uh, 
he does have some action here, but it's definitely possible that he just ends up, you know, having a somewhat anemic draw where he's not able to play out his cards. So there's PNLR from Atlaw. Gets himself a Thopter token. And what's interesting about PNLR in this matchup that uh, makes her particularly strong is that last ability you see there, Sacrifice an Artifact, Target Creature can't block this turn because this matchup is so much about uh, being able to break a board stall and once you get late enough in the game, that ability being able to make your opponent's flyers not able to block while you swing over with enough vehicles to be lethal, it's just so huge in this matchup. So being able to punch through a uh, through the Ethersphere Harvester logjam. Exactly. And uh, I can't imagine Matt Long doesn't just uh, block oh. with the Aethersphere Harvester. Also here. gives him another... Uh, this may not come up, but... You know, the ability to say block with a Thopter, block mm -hmm. an Ethersphere Harvester in a situation where you're racing, and perhaps Bran Bronson Geraci is trying to gain some life, mm -hmm. and you can block, sacrifice the creature before damage if it's an artifact creature, yeah. and uh, you know make something unblockable, even though that's not relevant in that combat. <laughs> but what it does do is sort of counter the life link ability. Yeah, and th that's hugely relevant. But not what happened here. Bronson gained some life. Gains four life, actually, because veteran motorist crewed the harvester. And I think Matt Long there was thinking that, uh, you know, he'd much rather turn this into a bit of a racing situation. But, uh, uh, again, racing's hard when you're, you know, lifelinking and your opponent's lifelinking. So, Pia's going to crew the harvester. Looks like Matt wants to attack with everybody. Yeah, I imagine he does if he chose to, you know, crew it with the Pia. Only two Thraben inspectors there to block if he attacks with the scrounger, but he's not going to do that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's because he's going to play Heart of Kieran here. Yeah, and that, that's that's basically what we know from that play. I mean, if he's not attacking with a guy that can't block, he's definitely got some sort of vehicle to play that he's planning on crewing with it. Here's an unlicensed disintegration. Now, again, interestingly, Matt, Matt could have countered that by sacrificing it to Pia. Yeah. Could, could have countered that card and, and saved himself uh, three damage there. Yeah. And... Th that's three damage. That's a very relevant amount. But lands a heart of Kieran here. And that may mean that Matt has some you know, something else to do with may the May have a fatal here. push here. Yep. long activates there's another unlicensed disintegration oh, he's gonna again. he's gonna go to eight and there another opportunity where he could have sacrificed it now it's down to two and uh the unlicensed disintegration would be countered if uh it did not have a legal target in which case the uh it would no longer deal with three damage Ooh, Gideon, it's a big card, but at this point he's down to one life. It's going to be hard for him to get back into this game. There you see Gideon, ally of Zendikar. You know, down to one life. Uh, has just as many bodies there. Has more bodies, though, than Bronson. Uh, of course, only has one flyer, so yeah. one turn of chump blocking on the eighth One, one flyer, no vehicles. And uh, Bronson's able to start cashing in some clues here. Draws an extra card. Here's an Inventor's Apprentice. It hops in the Harvester. 
Here comes everybody. It's four creatures. Yep. You have three blockers. Mm, that's got to be enough. And that is the game. Bronson Gervasi takes game one. Uh, steals the initiative, too. He was on the draw that game. Yeah, and uh, got a little bit lucky there having his opponent mulligan to five cards. He mulligan Still, to he six. played really well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting game. Okay, so here we are going to look in on the black-green versus black-green energy matchup between Ryan Hare and Robert Beatty. Robert Beatty, of course, local player. Yeah, we saw him win a pair of games in a row that both looked pretty unwinnable uh, in the uh, penultimate round, I believe, of the Swiss. Yeah, he's part of the Mr. Nice Guy crew that's here. I believe that they, they produced Steve Rubin. Yeah, they did. That, that's others. where Steve Rubin got his start playing at Play Magic, another uh, local product. Ron Kotwicka is the... We saw him earlier uh, in the weekend in the feature match area playing, too. The uh, person responsible for Mr. Nice Guy Games. Yeah, Ryan's deck has the ability to be extremely aggressive, but at the same time, he's also uh, definitely got the chops he needs to come back from way behind, as we've seen in the past. We see a card that Rob Beatty has uh, had a lot of success with this weekend, the Green Belt Rampager. And that card hits quite hard. 3-4 for one mana, uh, you know, followed up with a Rishgar, and suddenly, you know, it's a 4-5. Now, this is just absurd. Now, this is what Robert Beatty wants to be doing with that Green Belt Rampager. If he plays that on turn two after uh, Tune with the Aether, then he can, if his opponent plays a two-drop, use Fatal Push on the same turn, and suddenly he's just in a dominating position. There's Rishkar. He now has a 3-3 three, three and a 4-5 in play on turn three, attacking with the 4-5. Yeah, and they uh, they both tap for mana, too. It's just it's such a beating. Yeah, there's Sylvan Advocate for uh, Ryan Hare. And Sylvan Advocate currently outclassed by both of Robert Beatty's creatures. Uh, Ryan Hare really needs a fatal push just to stay in this game at all. Yeah, <laughs> well... Fatal pushes are all finding their way to the top of Robert Beatty's deck here. Yeah. And that attacks for seven. He's going to get Ryan Hare down to single digit life totals, falls to nine. And he's not done yet. There's a long tusk cub. Only one energy can't do anything pre combat with it, but. Seems fine. I believe Ryan Beatty's last card is Grasp of Darkness, which is about as good as it gets in this spot. So unless Ryan Hare has a removal spell and uses it this turn, the game is going to end on turn five here for Robert Beatty. Pretty impressive stuff. Okay, there's Nessa. Makes a plant token. And we're going to see, uh, we may see a Grasp of Darkness on a plant. I think we may. I mean, he could be pretty confident there's no Fatal Push at this point, unless it was drawn in the last turn. That's what he's thinking about. He's like, do I really want to grasp a plant? Is it worth it? I think, but then if you don't grasp the plant, you need to attack Nessa. Yeah. He is going to do it. Grasp of Darkness... Do you have a fatal push? Because otherwise, I'm sending everything in here. It is exact seas, as they say. Yes. <laughs> and Robert Beatty evens things up. Yeah, we got to watch that piece. whole game yeah, while the other was, two were shuffling. That was, <laughs> that was pretty fast. They see the players uh, checking the deck list. We're going to go back over, though, to our uh, main match here between Matt Long and Bronson Gervasi. This is the Marty Vehicles Mirror. And uh, Bronson, when they were looking over deck lists at the start of this match, was like, oh, boy, you have a lot of sideboard hate for this matchup. What, what, is, what is Matt Long doing after sideboard that's got Robert uh, Bronson so nervous? Uh, so uh, he goes up to four copies of Fatal Push. He has Immolating Claire. He has two Fairgrounds Warden. He has Archangel Avacyn. Um, release the Gremlins. I think, for what it's worth, I think... 
Bronson Gervasi is being a little bit facetious because he has just as much. <laughs> um, you know, he has two copies of the re release, the Gremlins. He has a Sky Sovereign of his own. He has an extra shock. He has the extra Fatal Push too. He has the Archangel Avacyn. I mean, the yeah, Matt Long might have like two more cards he's bringing in, but Bronson's main deck is like one card better. So it's it's kind of a push. <laughs> I think he, you know, Magic players like to believe that they're in a bad position because it, you know, we all do it. Sure. <laughs> Then you get a look at the Mr. Nice Guy Games logo in the background. <laughs> smiling, uh, smiling GG. I like that. I like that a lot. Good game, gentlemen and ladies. Matt Long played this game so well in the match to get into top eight. Really took his time and was able to maneuver his way around. It's an unbelievably complicated game three. Young guy, been playing for a long time. He's been playing since like Urza Saga. Wow. Took, took a little bit of a break around, you know, like everyone does at, at that age, but came back in 2013 around Therosara and has been just sort of maintained the I'm at two buys level and yeah. just hits all the <laughs> East Coast GPs. He's got a couple minimum caches. He's got, a, I believe, an invitational, Star City Invitational top eight appearance. But this is certainly the uh, the biggest step in his career. This is going to be his first taste of Proto competition when he gets to go to Nashville. That's a big step, especially when you've been playing for that long, because when you finally get there, you're not going to want to leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, everybody in the top eight will, will get that invite. Also, uh, ninth place, uh, Robert Graves. He had the X and two record. All right, we are getting underway here now in game two. Matt Long down a game. See Bronson Gervasi resolving a scry. He's on six cards once again. And Toolcraft Exemplar is the opener for Matt Long. It's about as good as it gets here. Absolutely. Thraben Inspector for Bronson. Is there a heart of Kieran for Matt Long? Nope, he's got his own Thraven Inspector, but that is going to give him an artifact, and that means yeah. he gets to rumble in for three with the Exemplar. Drops Bronson to 17. And still has that uh, ominous black mana looming <laughs> if he uh, representing possibly a fatal push. Yeah, Bronson can play around a fatal push here by playing uh, something like Heart of Kieran. Uh, that way, the fatal push... You know, he, because Matt will not want to use Fatal Push on something like a Thraben Inspector here. How about a Selfless Spirit from Bronson Gervasi? I think I would go ahead and Fatal Push that. <laughs> and that's exactly what's going to happen. Fatal Push takes down the Selfless Spirit. You know, maybe looking at the Fumigates in Matt Long's sideboard and wondering if he switches to be more of a controlling deck. It might be hard to do that when you're on the play because you really do want to try to steal the game. I think there's, uh, especially with the way the Marty Vehicles deck plays out, there are a high percentage of games where you can just kind of run away with it. And he might be looking to do that here. So Toolcraft Exemplar gets in for three more, and then Ether Spear Harvester is the turn three play for Matt Long. Been using all his mana every turn here. That's kind of what you want to do with this deck. Absolutely. Yeah, Matt ideally uh, will play a creature before combat so that he can activate the Aether Sphere Harvester. Ideally a Gideon if he's just going to curve perfectly. Yeah, that would be just about <laughs> as good as it gets here. If he has land Gideon, then uh, Bronson has his work cut out for him. Three cards in hand for Matt. I think I see a Fatal Push, but does not have a creature to play because he's crewing the Aether Sphere Harvester with the Thraben Inspector and attacking here for six, threatening to drop Bronson down to eight. Wow, Bronson just taking the damage, so leaving that three mana open, but uh, not for unlicensed disintegration, apparently. And there's Heart of Kieran for him. That's pretty good. After combat, 
Bronson is going to unlicense Disintegration. The Ethersphere Harvester is going to do three damage to Matt Long. And he's got his own Heart of Kieran. He's got a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Really great turn four there for Bronson. Uses all his mana on his third turn. Yep. And then makes two plays on turn four. Here, Matt Long uh, would really love to have something like uh, a uh, Toolcraft Exemplar because then he could uh, play it, crew the Heart of Kieran, and then when Bronson's Heart of Kieran gets crewed up, he can use Unlicensed Disintegration and uh, basically put Bronson in a situation where he's dead on the following turn. I think that's what he's doing here. Bronson Tracy crews his heart, and, uh, and Matt Long breaks it. Yeah. Down to one now, I believe. Yeah, drops right? Bronson down to one. He takes three from the unlicensed integration, four from the heart of Kieran, and he needs to find an answer here right now. He's going to crack a clue. Wow. That is a blistering game, too. We're going to see a game three just moments away. But in the meantime, we're going to go check in on our black-green uh, pseudo-mirror. And the energy deck against the... Uh more mid-range version. Brian Hare versus Robert Beattie. Both players uh, have a game here. We see Nissa getting, uh, doing a little work, putting some uh, additional counters on creatures, and Walking yeah. Ballista is able to pick off a tireless tracker before it can, you know, really cause a lot of trouble. What's really interesting is that. Uh, that Nissa puts multiple plus and plus one counters on the creatures thanks to Winding Constrictor and with a Walking Ballista in play, that's just all sorts of absurd. <laughs> well, here is Ob Nixilis, and it is going to take out the Winding Constrictor. And yeah, here we see tacking the, the Nissa, but Walking Ballista gets in the way, blocks, and then finishes off Ob Nixilis with the two counters that were left on it. But Robert Beatty uh, only has uh, his Planeswalker right now. And down to three lands here also. Okay, there the is situation. Winding Constrictor. Here is a tune with Ether. He's gonna be able to make a plant token as well. And he's not under a ton of pressure here from Ryan Hare. Yeah, only a Rishkar attacking him right now. I like tokens. every time we've said only uh, whatever it is with these black green decks, the next turn there's just like a murderous gear hulk in the wings. And that only <laughs> yeah, yeah. just becomes some ridiculous. Yeah, so Green Belt Rampager coming down now, too. Wow. So Robert Beatty went from almost no board to a pretty wide array of creatures here. Yeah, and that, uh, the minus ability that he's threatening with the Nissa next turn represents six points of extra power on the table right now, thanks to Winding Constrictor. And, you know, it's so interesting to watch these green-black matchups because they go from having nothing on the table to being in a dominant position so quickly. I mean, Ro Robert looked to have missed a number of land drops and to have been stuck on three lands before that turn, and suddenly he has three bodies in play out of nowhere. <laughs> This is on both sides of the table now. Voice of Zendikar. Impressive three mana planeswalker. Uh, made big waves with Steve Rubin not too long ago. So Grasp of Darkness is going to take out the Winding Constrictor, as again, right here. Common theme we see here, just using all his mana. Almost all his mana. He's got a little mana hidden there. <laughs> rich car. You can tap that for green. It does have one hidden green mana, that's true. Ryan Hare not playing any copies of uh, Blossoming, Defense. Blossoming Defense, though. Or Robert Beatty actually is playing three copies of Blossoming Defense in his main deck. So here we see Beatty. He's got a Rishkar Pima Renegade. Comes down, puts a two counter on a plant counter on the Greenbelt Rampager. He's got another Greenbelt Rampager. 
And look at that. He's able to use his plant yeah. to pay for <laughs> the Green Belt Rampager. That's pretty sweet. It's really sweet. You can actually see things get pretty crazy with uh, Nissa and Rishkar working together, you know, pump out a bunch of plants, put plus one, plus one counters on them, and then suddenly you have, like, 12 mana on the board, and maybe you're just, like, activating a walking ballista a couple times every turn. Yeah, it can get crazy real fast. Does Robert Beatty have no cards left in hand? Is that the situation? That is the situation. I don't believe uh, Ryan has any cards left either as he taps out, plays Tireless Tracker and Sylvan Advocate. Oh, no, I'm sorry, plays, he already had the title striker, plays Rishkar and uh, Sylvan Advocate. Some interesting stuff going on now. The, uh, those clues going to start adding up for Ryan here. Could secure him a spot in the finals here. We know there's going to be one black-green deck and one Marty Vehicles deck. It's a question of which variant of each of those archetypes is going to make it through. I know you're a big fan of, of the Black Green deck. That, that's what you would have played if you were coming to this tournament this weekend? Absolutely, yeah. So another plant from Nissa. But Robert Brady just has to pass the turn. And uh, interesting to choose to make a plant there. Uh, the minus two on Nissa there representing Quite a bit of power. Two card draws for Ryan from his clues. And uh, Ryan's side of the board starting to get quite a bit bigger. That tireless tracker is oh, close, yeah, to, close to being out of hand. Tireless Tracker gets out of hand pretty quickly, and once it starts making clues, it often wins the game. It's so hard to get back in a game when Tireless Tracker makes more than one clue, uh, especially when you're in these grindy situations where it's no longer just like the early turns where people are either running over each other or trying not to get run over. Yeah. Green, green Belt Rampage is a great card, but it has a glass jaw when it comes to Fatal Push. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, what's pretty absurd about it, though, is that they're still spending the same amount of mana to get rid yeah. of your Green Belt Rampager. Like, it's the bad part about Green Belt Rampager, and yet it's not even the end of the world. You can see uh, as we look in on the split screen here, Matt Long and Bronson Gervasi underway. Three of an inspector and a clue for Matt Long, Bronson Gervasi, a veteran motorist. Yeah, Ryan Hare looking to pull ahead now. Uh, since we started watching this match between Hare and Beatty, it, I think who the advantage player has switched back and forth maybe three or four times. <laughs> this tireless tracker, though, is breaking the game wide open. Ryan Hare solidly in the lead at this point. That Sylvan Advocate, not too shabby either. Very big. I mean, now it's already 4-5, and then it has the two plus one counters to make it a 6-7. A and here you see Beatty just uh, doing everything he can to kill that tireless tracker, and then just putting two plants in the way of the other creatures. Dust settles. It'll be just a 1-2 plant left in play for Robert Beatty, along with, of course, his Nissa. For what it's worth, though, he, he did keep the Nissa around. He's right. able to let that grow. And he also got the tireless tracker over, off the other side of the table. And it, that's no longer completely dominating the game. So I, I really like Robert's line of play there. And here's Rishkar. Trying to figure out where he's going to put his his counters. One on Rishkar, one on the new plant token. Yeah, and he may end up just jump blocking so like both these I feel plants. like a plant is, is in chump mode here. Yes. I think both plants are in chump mode. Oh yeah, and look at this. Also activating a Hiss and Quagmire, everything getting a bonus uh, from that Sylvan Advocate. The, the, creature, the, man, the creature land and the Sylvan Advocate both getting uh, a little extra here. Yeah, now that Hiss and Quagmire are attacking for four here. 
and I'm not sure what's aimed at Nissa and what's aimed at Robert, but uh, I imagine Rishkar and Sylvan Advocate are going at Nissa and Hiss and Quagmire is going at BD himself. Robert Beatty's up against it here. He is the uh, the local player. This is his GP. You know, you come into you know you come into a GP in your home state in your hometown. And you're like, this is my GP. Yeah. I, I am going to win this GP. They better understand who's the boss here. So, again, we see Robert trying to whittle down the board. Puts uh, everything in front of one creature. He's willing to let Nissa, you know, take the brunt of everything else. And Ryan Hare follows up with a winding constrictor. And they need a murderous gear hole. Yeah. Something along those lines. Something big and scary. Land plus Verter's Gear Hulk will be pretty good. But he would still be behind. The game is close enough, though, where a number of draw steps could get Robert Petey back in. I, we've seen it before from him. On the bottom, it looks like Matt Long is starting to go very wide here. Yeah, just a veteran motorist and an Ethersphere Harvester uh, for Bronson. It is for Harvester does do a very good job of playing defense for what it's worth. And unless Matt Long is able to find some sort of card that can get that off the table, it seems like this game may end up going pretty long. Wow. There is Fatal Push from Robert. He's able to take out the Sylvan Advocate, and that, that is, does a lot of work for him on this board. Absolutely. Ryan attacks for four. Plant token has, wants no part of that, just steps aside. You guys can have your fun. I'm over here photosynthesizing. Gets in there. Five mana untapped for Robert. You gotta feel like that's nothing in hand for him here. No, well. he's got a fatal, uh, he's got a grasp of darkness. He takes out the winding constrictor. He's now empty handed. And it looks like two lands in hand. No land and there's something. Maybe a fatal push in hand for Ryan Hare. Yeah, these two just kind of swinging blows back and forth. Uh, both players and very little to do right now. Ryan Hare getting the first crack at a draw step, so got to like his chances here. But in with <laughs> the race of Hissing Quagmire versus slightly modified plant token is not going in Robert's favor here. No, it is not. But he figures I'm not blocking. I might as well. I might as well chip in where I can. How about a glint sleeve siphoner? Yeah, that is immediately met with a fatal push. Yeah, that's a a card that you you don't want to see at this stage of the game. A little surprised to still see it in in for game two here. A little bit. I mean, it doesn't match up well against walking ballista at all. Two hissing quagmires into the red zone. Lots of land for Ryan here, but he's he's got you know creature lands to sink it into. And there's a quagmire for Beatty. And I but think he has a, another quagmire of his own also. So no, apparently not. That's the first quagmire. Down to four now. Got something in hand. Yeah, a life crafter a bestiary. Oh man, on any of those earlier turns, yeah. that card would have been absurd. Activates both of his yeah. creature lands. Gets Ryan down to two here. <laughs> Yeah, Robert, Robert falls to two. We've seen him win these games. He's got to find an yeah, answer. Yeah. He gets a creature a, he gets is pretty a good here. Yeah. A cre any any creature is pretty good here for what it's worth. Oh, did he forget to scry? Uh, I'm not sure. He looked I, at it and then just put it down in front of himself. But we kept it. Uh, ooh. 
that a targetless ruinous, ruinous path? Yeah, he could have scribed to the bottom. And Robert Beattie extends hands. Ryan Hare advances to the finals. And now we pick up this, again, mucked up board here between Matt Long and Bronson Gervasi. Everybody's honking. Nobody's moving. Yeah, and this this is the who blinks first type of board that we talked about when we were, you know, doing the Setting lead up into this, this match. match. Yeah. yeah. Although it looks as if Bronson is in pretty solid control of this game at this point. He has advantage in the air with Selfless Spirit and Aether Spirit Harvester, and then he also has a Planeswalker advantage. So you're saying it's not as mucked up as it looked on first glance? Yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, there's tons of stuff there. And then I looked for a second longer and thought, oh, there's a ton of stuff that bodes pretty well for Bronson over here. But there's Heart of Kieran for Matt Long. And so that, that actually can... Yeah. Do quite a lot of work and just completely control, re, you know, taking control back of the air. Selfless Spirit can attack into it. If he attacks with just the Aether Sphere Harvester, you know, he you has the opportunity block. to block it and let it bounce. Although there is a veteran motorist in play, which makes that more challenging. Toolcraft Exemplar and Scrap Heap Scrounger attack here into Aethersphere Harvester. Bronson crews his shiny vehicle. And I, I assume Matt Long is going to use Unlicensed Disintegration if he set that up as he did. He does use Unlicensed Disintegration, but Bronson sacrifices Selfless Spirit to make it uh, indestructible. Yeah. And he redirects three damage, which still happens. Yeah, the, the creature is still there. It's still a legal target. At Gideon. Drop, drops Gideon down to one loyalty. Bronson gets to eat a Toolcraft Exemplar and gain a nice little chunk of life. They're going to be gaining four here, thanks to veteran motorists' prowess behind the wheel. James kind of is like driving prowess. Right? He's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> plus one, plus one. <laughs> and up Bronson, uh, this Gideon just it going to churn out, a, you know, this incremental advantage over the course of the game, just making these two twos over and over and over again. And Matt's really got to find a way to pressure that. And he currently doesn't even have enough power on the board to crew up the heart of Kieran. Ah. So this is a rough spot for Matt Long. And uh, now Bronson is going to press his advantage here. Yeah. It's an attack with a four power. Heart of Care. I mean, uh, Ether Sphere Harvester. No more energy for him to gain life, but that's okay. Yeah, a four power flyer is plenty good here, especially when he only needs one power to crew. Drops Matt Long down to 10. And he has the Knight as a blocker, has a card in his hand, six lands untapped. Shaking his head. Wonder what's in his hand. Selfless Spirit really uh, proved its worth here. That was... Uh, yeah. And again, it's a card that's really hard to include in your main deck in a format where so many people are playing Walking Ballista. But uh, when you're in the matchups where your, your opponent is playing creatures and they are not playing Walking Ballista, that card is really good. It is flying, so it's good at pressuring Planeswalkers. It, uh, you know, it just makes combat a nightmare for the opponent. Like, they always have to, you know, parse out how combat's going to work, which definitely gives you the advantage in terms of strategic planning. All right. Here's a Gideon from Matt Long. Makes a night ally token. And suddenly everything's kind of back at parity. The Aether Sphere Harvester can still come in because it's going to be a 4-6, the veteran motorist driving, but... Matt Long here has an opportunity to use Heart of Kieran to kill the Gideon on the other side of the table. No, 
that's what he's decided he's going to try to do. But unlicensed disintegration from Bronson Gervaisi. He redirects the three damage to wow. Gideon. Gets the two for one there. Complete and total blowout there. Matt Long out of cards. Nothing but a Thraben Inspector and a Knight token in play. Wow. Bronson, a Gideon, an Aether Sphere Harvester, a veteran motorist, and a Knight token of his own in solid control of the game and about to find himself in the finals of this yeah, Grand Prix. Picks up Gideon. It's going to attack. The token's going to attack. The Aether Sphere Harvester is going to get crewed by the veteran motorist. <laughs> Matt is at 10. He's trying to find a block. You know, so he's going to have to jump here. And it's five damage. He Finally just puts the Knight Token in front of the Knight Token. Yeah, so can he go to two here? Wow. Goes to one. Uh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> Forgot about the veteran motorist. All right. You have a clue there you can sack. What can you find, Matt Long? Uh. Looking at his sideboard, it looks like. He's trying to figure out what could he possibly draw here. Yeah. So actually, what he's going to do is he's going to bring back instead a scrap heap scratcher. Yeah, maybe checking to see whether or not certain cards were sideboarded in or not. Can you do that? <laughs> He's at one. He's got to find the perfect answer. He's got a lot of stuff he has to deal with here. Well, there's Heart of Kieran. That's a start. It's something. Bronson, though, activates Needle Spires and attacks, and the game ends right here. How many times do you feel like we've said that this weekend? Probably about like Creature Lands. Eight. <laughs> yeah, Creature Lands have been forgotten about very often this tournament. Bronson, it does not look like yeah. he's going to forget. The semifinals of the GP, it's not happening. <laughs> Realizes he has to crew his Aethersphere Harvester. Needle Spires, Aethersphere Harvester, and Gideon all come in. Matt Long's going to go one card deeper. He's going to see if he can find anything off of his clue. He's looking at his options. And that's, that's the it. hand. Bronson Gervaisi advances to the finals. He is going to play against... The black green deck. It's going to be Mardu Vehicles versus black green in the finals. It's just how it was drawn up. Just, yeah, just. Bronson exactly. played that match beautifully. He, he definitely, he's the deserved winner. All there. right. Yeah, I, I felt really good about how he played that Mardu Vehicles mirror. It looked good. Still one more match waiting for him. We're going to be back with that match pretty quickly. But first, we have a couple messages and then the finals of Grand Prix Pittsburgh.